one of the best and all too often the worst parts about working at theme parks was the costumes. So when you work at a theme park, you are going to get a costume that you're going to wear that is going to help you blend into the theme of the park or your ride or both. It's going to tell people what your job is, what you do, and it's also going to be your way of identifying with the park. One of the things that parks have done for quite a while is make their costumes out of materials that aren't always the most comfortable to wear. In fact, one of the jokes about Epcot is that it's acronym EPCOT actually stands for Extreme Polyester Costumes of Torture. And yeah, some of the outfits that people have to wear are still kind of along that lines. I mean, I don't know who invented polyester, but they should be slapped around. And unfortunately, that's one of the things I've had to deal with from my very first job at a theme park. The very first job I had was at Rhino Rally. I mean, it's a cool looking shirt. It looks great. It definitely shows you what ride you're working and what you do. The problem with it is the material. One, the shirts tend to run just a smidge small. They're a 65% polyester blend. There is no give at all in that. So if you happen to have a big meal, this outfit was going to fit a little snug and tight and then being polyester in the heat it didn't breathe very well not only that but the black pants that we wore well yeah those were about the same kind of blend of polyester and so you've got polyester and polyester and in florida where it's hot and humid most of the time this would get very clingy and you kind of get a bit damp because it wouldn't breathe very well and it looked good. These are not real comfortable to wear. I kept it as a, a souvenir of working, but um, I would never wear this around just for the sake of wearing it around because it ain't comfy. Looks cool, sucks to wear. <laughs> After that, of course, I went over to Walt Disney World and there I got to wear a couple different things. We had two basic outfits. We had what we called our adventure outfit and then eventually we adopted a Main Street outfit. The adventure outfit basically composed of shorts or pants, the brown vest, and then the shirt. The shirt is a polyester blend, which isn't too bad. I think it's a 50-50 blend. But one of the things that they did nice with this shirt, you know, one, it's thin. It's not as thick as the other. But they also included breathing <laughs> and ventilation, which does help. It does actually make it a little bit easier and they tended to run a little big. A lot of us like to get them just a smidge big, so that way they would be slightly baggy. Being a 50-50 blend, and I think that's what it is, it would be a little bit more comfortable than the Rhino Rally outfits. You could breathe a little bit. You still got plenty hot. The problem you had was then we would take the vest, and this vest, I'm pretty sure, is nylon. While it looks like great ventilation holes, the vest would then actually push down on the back ventilation of the shirt, which means it wasn't open to breathe like you would want. And being nylon, this didn't breathe at all. And I'm guessing the back part's nylon. I really am not sure what the main part is, if it was, if this is cotton or polyester. It feels more cottonish, but it just, it weighed on you, it pressed down on the shirt, it gave you two layers. And so if you were outdoors in the heat, you were going to sweat. The one good thing about this outfit, though, that was extremely handy as a photographer was pockets. Lots of pockets, because you had a shirt pocket, but then you actually had another shirt pocket. And then on the vest, you've got pocket and pocket. And then on the shorts that you wore, which are these, these are actually the Sea Captain shorts, you've got the two front pockets, you've got the two back pockets, two back pockets, and you also have a side pocket. So it gave you plenty of room to be able to keep stuff and hide stuff and organize and sort. So it was great in that regard. It just was not the best for the heat. And this is also another polyester blend and with a little bit of cotton in it. Um, this is probably a 50-50 or a 65-35. The tag is just plain worn out. 
So again, yeah, not the most comfortable, but not bad either. And being shorts and being pockets, these are okay. It's just that you were outside and so you sweat a whole lot. I actually preferred wearing the Main Street outfit and I don't have one of those. They were a, a cotton shirt, they were cotton knickers. Okay, wearing knickers definitely took a little bit of getting used to for a guy because you have a scrunchie right around your knee level. So that was a bit different, and you'd have these long knee-high socks to cover that. But it was cotton, so it breathed, it was comfortable. You did have to make sure wearing white knickers that you had to be careful what you were wearing underneath them. We did have some people that weren't so careful and you're kind of looking going, you know, ain't nobody want to see that. The bad thing with the Main Street uniform, in spite of it being generally more comfortable, like I said, outside of adjusting the knickers, was that it didn't have any pockets at all. There were no shirt pockets. There were no front pockets on the knickers. There was no side pocket on the knickers. There was one back pocket, which for a guy, that's your wallet. We didn't wear the vest, so we had one pocket. That made it a little interesting as far as carrying around our batteries and our photo pass cards and anything extra we might need. And especially if we're traveling a little bit, our phone maybe. Although if I was on Main Street, I would put my phone in a locker and keep it locked up there. But it made it hard to carry stuff around. So we actually had to have these big pouches that we would clip to our belts. And then, of course, you have to make sure you got your belt tightened so it doesn't start sliding down. I liked the look of the Main Street outfits. I thought they looked great. They were comfortable. I just wish they had put pockets in them. So it was kind of a weird balance and mix between the two. We could go with the more polyester, which had a lot more pockets and you were probably going to be sweating. Or you could go with the cotton blend and the knickers on the knees and no pockets. But overall, it worked out well. Where Disney was really nice was actually on those few days in Florida where it gets warm. And we would get our fleeces. And these are amazing. They are warm. They are comfortable. If you're working Main Street, you actually kind of like the cold days because it gave you an excuse to wear this. Because then you would have pocket, 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 pocket. And it would make up for the lack of pockets on the Main Street costume. This is the one thing that actually went back and forth with both costumes. So Main Street, you could wear this. And you'd also wear this anywhere else you shot Photo Pass. It was cold. They're warm, they're comfy. I love the fleece. And yes, I do actually occasionally wear this even around now. Although you can tell it is a theme park issue because it has the name tag spot. <laughs> These are comfortable and warm. This is one thing I was kind of grateful that when I moved up to Missouri and was planning on staying on seasonal at Disney, had planned on going back and it didn't work out, but I ended up with my costumes and I was kind of like, you know, this is the one part I don't mind. My others were all at a stage where Disney Wardrobe had basically kind of canceled them out of the system anyways because they were all old. But this, I was like, ah, I'll, I'll take the fleece. That was nice. Best part of the costume at Disney. Silver Dollar City, on the other hand, was another whole experience on the train. On the train, we had our conductor's outfit, which was black pants. Again, kind of the 50-50 blend. Actually, they might have even been less than that. They weren't too bad. They fit comfortably generally. We had white dress shirts. And then certain times of the year, we would also get blue. And they were a standard dress shirt, believe it or not. We'd get them fresh out of the plastic packaging and have to unfold them and unwrap them and unclip them and unpin them and all that whole bit. Then we had our ties. The vests were probably the worst part of it. Because the vests were, again, a thick polyester vest. And yeah, not the most comfortable and they didn't breathe. Most of the year, it wasn't too bad. But you get into the hot summer months and those vests would be miserable. So I was very grateful that we were given an option that if the temperature was 90 degrees or above we could actually use garters for our sleeves which is the little black stringy bands and we could roll our sleeves up put the garter on and then we could get suspenders from wardrobe and we could actually put those on so i actually had two pairs of pants that had buttons sewed onto them for suspenders and the wardrobe would provide the suspenders. And that way I could ditch the vest and go with the suspenders and the garters. And on hot days, it was much more comfortable. But if it was below 90, yep, we still had on the vest and everything else normal. Not a bad outfit. Generally comfortable. Like I said, the vest was the only part that on a hot day was really kind of bad. Robbing, on the other hand, was very different. When I first started, they basically gave us brand new sets of bibs would look something like this. And then 
They would also go into a box of old discarded shirts from around the park. You would go through this box of discarded shirts, find a couple that fit you, and pull them out of the box. And so you may get a nice shirt kind of like this. You might get a maintenance and construction worker shirt. You may get one with a design. You might get this red or a blue standard employee shirt or something like that. And then we would have to robberify them. We robberified this as well as this. What that meant was basically finding a way to make it look worn out. So you can see that we tried to do a little bit of work on this one. The new bibs they gave us, I will say this, that the Big Smith brand bibs, they don't fade, they don't wear out. <laughs> These things I beat the snot out of, and you can see that they still hold their color. The thing I found with bibs is I don't like bibs. I don't like bibs. They ride, so you have to be careful to not let them ride because then you can't work in kind of like this, which isn't comfortable. So I would actually take the straps here and I would stretch them as much as I could. And you can see those are all the way down at the end just to try to get them down a little bit so they wouldn't ride on me. The other thing is the metal clasps. These things, well, they would rub. And of course, they're right about here. And so that would get very painful over the course of the day. So if you were to ever look at pictures of me robbing over the course of one day, you'll see this shoulder up while the other one's off, and then it'll flip partway during the day because I'm trying to save from rubbing spots that became very painful. And we had to do that for a year and a half. We were stuck with bibs because that's what most of the robbers wore. Then in talking with my manager and the wardrobe, we found out that in the years past, there had actually been a time when the robbers had worn jeans and old vests really and so we started making a bit of a push and can we possibly make that allowed again yeah it never changed we just didn't know it and so me and a couple other guys we got some old jeans i actually used one pair that i already had and then a couple from silver dollar city we got some old dress vests that had been discarded and we switched that out of this oh so much more comfortable no more rubbing no more riding no more heavy duty layers because these things are thick, so in the summer, they're hot. It was much, much more comfortable to wear. And then the shirts, well, it would really depend upon the shirt. This is actually one of the nicest ones I got. And I kept this in good shape because this is more my cold weather, winter robbing shirt. So you can see long sleeves and it's still in good shape. But for most of the summer, we would get the thinner shirts, maybe some dress shirt style stuff. And we would cut the sleeves off and we'd rip them up and we may rip the pockets down and kind of trash them up pretty good. And that way they could still be semi cool in the summer. You can tell the warmer the day, the shorter the sleeves or to the point where sometimes we had just ripped the sleeves almost entirely off just to be able to keep cool while we're out robbing, especially with those bibs. That was kind of a look at our uniforms, our costumes, and what we had to wear, what it was like to wear them. Yeah, there's a reason that theme park employees call polyester outfits costumes of torture. Oh, I don't miss that. <laughs> Although I do miss the look that we had and them being able to help get you in, in character. That part was cool. The feel just always wasn't. Have you had to wear costumes for certain places that were really comfortable or really not i would love to hear about it please don't hesitate to share your stories below is there a costume that you really liked in the theme park except for maybe what it was made of i'd love to hear it please don't forget to share below there's also a ton of info in the description below fan pages and community pages merchandise and products i use and stuff be sure to check all that i also want to give a huge shout out of thanks to my patrons my patrons allow me to travel, to visit parks, and to do so much more. If you want to know more about Patreon and supporting me, check the link at the end. I also want to give a huge shout out to my two new patrons who signed on. To Arthur Atwell, thank you so much, and to Denny Sigmund, thank you so much for signing on as patrons. Patrons get perks, they get inside access, and they bless me so much. Thank you so very much for watching, and God bless. Okay, so this is polyester costumes of torture. One of the things. Now, the shirt is kind of a polyester? Polyester, yeah. If you'd like to know about my merchandise, fan pages, and more, be sure to check the description below. 
If you'd like to know whenever I've got a new video posted, well, make sure you hit that button right up there and subscribe. If you'd like to watch another one of my videos, I've got a great one for you right here. And if you'd like to be like these wonderful people here and support me financially on Patreon, well, make sure you check the link right there. There's even some extra perks for them. Thank you so much and God bless.